Network Automation Nerds podcast. Hello and welcome to Network Automation Nerds podcast, a podcast about network automation, network engineering, Python, and many other technology topics. I'm your host, Eric Cho. Today on the show, we'll be talking to Taha Youssef, aka Net Automator, and that's a that's a brilliant, brilliant handle. I love it already. Um, Taha embodies the spirit of innovation in network automation with a blend of skills, insights, and foresights to not just keep up with the trends, but also to set them. I am super excited to, ha to have Taha on the show today, and I know we'll have a great time chatting. So let's dive right in. Hey, Taha, welcome you, to Eric. the show. Brilliant. Thank, thank you so much, Eric. It, it's much appreciated. I'm, I'm, I'm just excited to be here. And uh, yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm quite, uh, you know, I think to put it lightly, I'm, I'm very sort of, I'm, I'm excited. I'm nervous at the same time. I'm just excited to be, you know, a part of your show. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honored, actually. I feel honored to be here actually today. So thank well, you. I appreciate it. No, the honor is all mine because um, <laughs> as, as we were ch just chatting before, uh, before we, we put the, put, press the record button, the reason why um, I think it would be great to have you share your experience is because you actually is one of the few people who's openly shared their, his, not, his or her knowledge and uh, just trying to help people, right? Like getting the knowledge out. And I think we need more of that. And that's why I think we'll just, we'll just have a great time chatting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's great that, you know, I think one of the sort of key, not mistakes, but I think people often sort of reluctant to do is that when you learn something, I think it's quite crucial that you you share it, you know, that you share it with a wider audience. I think it, not it, not only is it beneficial to to the your audience, but it's also beneficial to you. Because what I tend to notice is that um people always ask me, you know, how did you learn so quickly? Like, how do you, one of the keys I, I found personally for myself to, to be able to retain what I've learned is to share it mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, teach an audience exactly what I'm, what I'm learning or what I've learned. It, it sort of, you know, sort of cements itself much better sort of in my, in terms of memory, in terms of memorizing it. Um, so it's not only beneficial to the cloud, you know, to your audience and to everyone else within the community, the network engineering, but it's also beneficial to you as well. So I think that it's, uh, it works both ways. I think it's, it's very sort of vital that we, we share knowledge really. So. Yeah, I, I would Roger that. I mean, people say teaching is uh, learning it twice, which is yeah. absolutely true. Uh, I would say it's probably teaching is learning on steroids, if you will. <laughs> like, because... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I because think you know. Yeah, go ahead. You, you 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 tend to. I mean, what what you're what you're essentially doing is you're. If you're one thing I've realized is that when I learn a particular topic, and I've studied that topic. Um, just today, I was studying a particular to a topic on 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 the nexus switches, right. and I, I and I thought to myself, you know, the moment you sort of the moment you finish you stop learning it and and <laughs> you know it, you, the the decline in knowledge is so f steep that you know it, it just completely evaporates so one thing i've noticed that you know the, the sooner you share it um and and the the better it is and if you can sort of describe it to someone like for example today i was i was trying to teach my son exactly what i've learned which was impossible he's 12 years old right he's he's into ga his games and, and 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 so forth. so he's it's like what are you talking about daddy but I, if you try to explain it in ways that um if you're able to explain the topic that you've learned in in simple terms in plain right. english right. it really does show that there's no knowledge gaps but if you're finding it difficult to explain to someone in in simple plain english without using any technical jargon there's there's definitely knowledge gaps or i've noticed within myself anyway um, and what i tend to do is go back and study that topic even further so that i'm able to explain it in simple terms you know in a brief term because um it, like i said it does two things when you when you share that knowledge um one it cements that information in you but it also works as a verification tool you know whether you've actually digested that that knowledge yourself so yeah yeah i mean i'm reading this book called uh the brain by dr eagleman and yeah. uh, what he talked about was um, essentially our brain. I mean, we have enough neurons and cells. Like essentially, when we're born, we don't we don't gang anymore, right? It's one of those areas yeah. that you have it fixed. <laughs> yeah. But what what has changed is the amount of connections between these neurons, where you make connectivities. Yeah. And um, what was astonishing was 
I mean, that this fact by itself is already great, but uh, what's also <laughs> astonishing is we actually make the most connections. Um, the brain is just like the sponge and, and it starts expanding and have, making all these connections, but we yeah. max out at the age of two. So between oh, wow. the age of zero to two, we make all these kind of connections and they, they've done the study on showing, you know, like the graph on all these light, light up, you know, portions that you're just yeah. connected. But yeah. then from two and on, you actually decrease those connections yeah. and you strengthen the part of the brain or the area that you learn um, wow. by making those connections stronger. Right. Wow. So essentially for the two year olds who are, you know, say, for example, learning Japanese mm -hmm. uh, you yep. know, in the Japanese family. Mm -hmm. Or versus they in a um, maybe like an English speaking family, yep. the, the kind of connection that it starts to change, right? Like so, the the parts that is very good at you know learning Japanese mm -hmm. becomes you know stronger connection and pipe and decreases those connections from two year and all on. So I think what you're saying is true. Whereas what we learn, we make that initial connection between in our brain, right? Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know between like. We'll, we'll get into this iOS and containers, right? So we make that initial <laughs> connection, but it's a very weak, right? Like it's yeah. just the little dots, if you will, like a connection yeah. between the two. But when you're explaining it, you're like strengthening it. You're thinking about it again, and you're just trying to explain to somebody else, an intelligent 12-year-old like your son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, it is very interesting. I mean, I've never looked at it from that sense, but but I remember um, one of the um, my, my previous position. It was a, a university that I was working at, and um, mm -hmm. and I remember the um, one of the professors told me that you know one of the ways that she finds you know. Um, easy like and any and the, the easiest method to learn the ways that she never forgets what she's teaching is because she's constantly teaching it right it just <laughs> never you know it, it, she never forgets and uh, and i said how interesting because this is something that i've noticed when i'm you know the, the more i teach someone the topic the more it's sort of like ingrained and even right. if you tend to forget that topic and it, it's quite interesting because it's sort of, it's like it's embedded somewhere that even if you tend to forget the detailed intricate details of of that topic right it, it, it's easy to recall right the, the more you t you know because it's it's um i, I don't know what i mean I, I, I like i said i'm not a scientist i couldn't tell you exactly what's going on brain wise but it's <laughs> it's amazing it's, it's absolutely amazing honestly yeah me neither so but if <laughs> now that i know about it maybe the way i would imagine is uh you know maybe initially you pay file like this dirt road right like when yeah. we initially learn it but we're mm -hmm. teaching it you're like Pave some cement on it, and then, exactly. and then you're, like, you're teaching it again. It's like widen it again, so it becomes easier to come back to, and it's a smoother ride to get to that. You know, the the point A to point B. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but you know, it's it's just a. Uh, I get all excited about talking about teaching. And another point I would make, and I don't, I would love to hear your thoughts about it too. Is nowadays, you know, because of the book, because of the podcast. Whenever yeah. I learn a new topic, in the back of mind, I'm always thinking about, so how should I explain this to somebody else, right? <laughs> and how do I how do I logically relate it giving, by giving out examples? How can I do that? And you know, you're almost starting from the end, if you end up teaching somebody, you knew you were going to do that. Mm -hmm. And then when you learn it, you learn it more logically. You have more, I guess, connectivity you should go in. I don't know if it's the same way for you. Yeah, no, I, I think I understand exactly what, what you mean. So it, it all depends on the sort of the audience that you're, you're trying to right. give this information. Yeah. So if point. You're, yeah, so if the audience is, is a fairly technical audience, um, then um, it's easy for you to sort of, you know, um, um, express yourself using those technical terms because you know that the audience will, will know about it. But but I think um, the um, it's, it's, it's really down to audience because when you're teaching an audience who are not so technical, who are new to the field and you're right. trying to explain things in ways that they maybe understand, it's quite difficult. I think this this is a topic that I've also spoke to one of my the lecturers in my previous position, you know, Right. Um, I was the, I was the infrastructure engineer then, but I used to sort of talk to the lecturers on on a regular basis. That it's 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 really down to making. I think I think the, the, the very intelligent one of the professors was was it's really down to making connection um, to your um, to your audience. But it's not just a connection. It, I remember her saying to me that um, one of the best ways is 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 really that you provide the best way to to teach somebody is provide sort of like a, a catered individualized 
um, 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 way to deliver that that material that you're trying to teach. So the way that fits in with that, the way that person thinks and learns, right? That is the best way to deliver that information to that particular person. But it becomes difficult when you're trying to teach a, a whole class with different people, you know, right. different um, 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 sort of backgrounds and, and, and different ways of thinking. Um, and, and that is where I think that really teaching skills does shine out, you know, really differentiate because the one that can grasp an audience and and use terms that where every single member is able to understand um, um, and regardless of, you know, uh, without being individualized, I think that's where really teaching sort of splits apart, you know, that really does split. Apart. And it shows, you know, who's more skilled at teaching and who's not so skilled at teaching and and who's you know got a lot more to learn because what i found is the really high skilled teachers i mean these are they can teach in ways where everyone will understand right yeah. i mean they, they, yeah. you know they they they're able to connect with everyone right yeah. um they don't need to learn everyone individually right in order to deliver that topic to them because they can find a sort of a middle ground where they can teach everyone which is which is quite amazing so i think it's you know, teaching is is a very complex subject. I think within itself, I, I believe so. You know, leaving outside the IT field, I think to be able to teach, and I think this is what makes really great content creators and those who are teaching, such as yourself, because you you tend to make connections with everyone. You know, you 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 tend to sort of deliver it in a way that everyone can relate to, or everyone can at least benefit from it. You know, um, because it, it's it's like I said, it's it, it's all down to your audience, and I think sometimes understanding your audience is is the key. You know. Yeah, that's a great point, and uh, that's where I kind of. I would openly admit that's why I fall on my face, you know, because, you know, give me a room of network engineers who's interested in, you know, Python. I'm, I'm right at home, right? Like I'm just <laughs> nodding away. But, you know, if I go to a meetup <laughs> and uh, you, you'll see the very socially awkward Eric, you know, with my like little punch you know, in, the, in, the, in the corner of the room, you know, trying not to get noticed. I go, oh, you know, nobody, nobody should talk to me because I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and that's a great point. I think I think you, you hit it right on the head where, you know, um, a great teacher makes analogy. And it's Absolutely. hard because the analogy has to be relatable to the other party. And when you're talking to somebody who you may not be familiar with at, as the background, at such as exactly. from, from yourself, yeah, yeah that, that is where it becomes very difficult. It is. Absolutely. It is absolutely. I mean, I, I agree with you on the topic of, you know, on, on, on network engineers, because I, I find it quite surprising that um, as network in sort of engineers, you know, um, that we we tend to... Um, uh, you know, although you know on online, um, you know, automation is everywhere. You know, we right. tend to talk about it, and and you get a sense where, you know, automation is quite widespread now within the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Believe you me, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's far from it. It's yeah, we're, very, we're living in a bubble. We're living like this newer <laughs> animation bubble. We just talk to like yeah. a monster. Exactly. You know, I mean, I'm, you know, I try to introduce it in my position. It's, you know, it is, it, honestly, it's um, a, a, a very, very scary topic to still for a lot of network yeah. engineers. Um, you know, the seasoned guys, you know, guys that got their, you know, CCIEs, you know, 15, 20. It's very, very topic, difficult topic for them to grasp. And, and I, I'm not entirely sure why, because, you know, half of these people are very intelligent. I mean, they are highly, highly intelligent. And, and I think maybe it's just, you know, hesitation maybe i'm not entirely sure what, what what it is but it's um but it's something that i thought that would be a far more widespread automation in general by now anyway you know we're in 2023 i thought that automation would be f used quite fairly or uncommon without the industry but so far what i'm finding is you know i mean i've worked for fairly one of the largest it companies in the world cap gemini and as an architect and it's not that is not the case that is still not mm -hmm. the case eric which is yeah. which is quite disappointing actually because you know it's um, it can it can bring a lot of um, it can bring a lot of benefits, you know, from, from business requirement down to, you know, technical requirements and, and, and so forth. So it's, um, yeah, it is, it is quite a shame that it's not as widespread as, as we would like it to be. Right. Well, you know, I, I count myself into that. I mean, I got my IE back in 2008, right? Like the other day I was just thinking about it and yeah. it has been about 15 years. <laughs> so, yeah. so I, I'm You're right. exceptionary. You're an exceptionary. No, no, I'm square <laughs> in, that, in that camp where... You know, it's yeah. hard to teach an old doc like myself uh, new skills, but, you know, mm. I, I try, but, um, yeah. you know, I, I openly admit, like, I eat the same dish at the restaurants. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I don't I don't really yeah. venture out to save alike know, yeah, exotic uh, restaurants yeah. nowadays. But um, yeah. well, you know, I get I guess I'm so excited talking about teaching and learning and like making you know neuron uh, connections. But um, yeah. but let's let's start from you know your origin story uh, sure. a bit. So how yeah. you, you know can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you get into technology? Sure. Um, sure. Have you always been interested in technology? Yeah, yeah, sure. So I grew up in um, uh, London, um, England, southeast London, nice. um, small town, um, very sort of deprived area, I would say. Um, mm. And what I've, um, as I was uh, about the age, I think it was about 13, um, mm. I, I remember my, at the time, my father got me a brand new PC. I, I mean, we, we, we just, he, he said we needed a PC at home and everyone needs a PC. And I was like, nice. okay. And then, yeah, nice. So at the time, I remember it was uh, Windows 98. Oh, wow. uh, Windows 98. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and uh, it was, you know, I started, um, I started using the pc and i remember I, I don't know what happened but sometimes something happens in your brain maybe it's some changes that have occur in your brain but i just could not let it go i you know i started diving deep um i learned many many different topics um one of the first things that i wanted to learn was programming i remember i started learning um visual basic i think it was six at the time wow um, and, and yeah so i started learning visual basic and i don't know if you can remember delphi as well um, <laughs> not used to, you know? <laughs> that, and, that and, and, me i have yeah. <laughs> so I started to understand the whole concept of programming, what is programming, mm. and, I, and I just started to fell in love. Um, and it wasn't just the, the whole software development side, it was different side. So whether that was, you know, from hardware, you know, upgrading the PC. So mm. for example, I wanted that when, when the time came when the PC was too slow, I wanted to be the one to upgrade it. You know, I remember my father saying, we'll take it to the to the engineers. And I'm like, no, 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 dad, I, I want to upgrade it. Let me upgrade it, please. I can do it. I can yeah. do it. And my father there wasn't so go. sure, right? And, and it's like, you know, going to blow up the house so you're not gonna <laughs> that's it. It's like, that's it. no no and you know at the time so I, I got fairly hooked to the point I remember at one point my mother my mother was actually worried about me where you know my friends would go out and, and I would just be stuck in the room um and and just continuously be on the PC um I hooked up with a lot of great people online we had IRC um and it was just amazing you know it was just uh, such an amazing tool really for me and and from that moment on I think about fifth when I was about 15 I knew what I wanted to do straight away I knew that I wanted to work in IT mm -hmm. um sort of moving on um, forward so after in you, so in UK, we have a, sort of the secondary school and then you go to college and then you go to a university if you right. want to sort of higher education. Right. Um, so after college, uh, after sorry school, I went to um, a further education college. Um, I did an, uh, uh, IT, it was an IT course. Um, and I remember um, while I was in the IT, while we we're doing this IT, it was a small um, web development course in yep. the early days. And um, one of the, uh, the the teachers who was actually, he was an assistant teacher at the class, um, said to me, you know, um, why don't you go into university? Because, you know, you're, you, you're very passionate about what you do. IT and um, and and you should really go into. I believe you know you will excel if you get a degree. You know in, in computer science. And at the time, I was still really hesitant to to go to go further. But um, I remember him. He even wrote a letter to the university saying that you know please do accept her. I believe you will achieve great things if you can. Um, and that was exactly how I got in, entry into you know into the university. So oh, wow. it was a local it was a local university um, when I left college. Um, then I went in and I did my degree in computer science. Um, funny enough. When I went, um, well, one of the modules was um, um, systems lifecycle development, which was mainly around um, software development, lifecycle development. So I think we used Agile mm -hmm. back then. It was unified systems development process. So it's more mm -hmm. like SDLC, class diagram, state, you know, th those sort of things. And one of the things that I've learned was, and that was really, really interesting. And I think a lot of people tend to miss out is and I, and I sometimes wonder where would I've been if I didn't learn that part, aspect was that it taught me sort of the, the state of, of a system can be so for, for example I knew about um object oriented development you know class-based development and, and 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 you know what methods were um and what attributes were you know we we knew you know in usdp in um sort of S uh, system design life cycle it teaches you that but it teaches you from sort of a, a, a system design life cycle point of view it doesn't right. it's not very specific to any programming language at all so you know you know what a class is you know what an object is for example you know what an attribute is you know what a, a method is right um yeah. and, and, and when you have all of those th that sort of building blocks it's like a the foundation really of a house you know um 
it, it kind of made sense because in every programming language, especially in the object oriented world, you, you know, you knew um, what a method was. You said, you know, a yeah, method is a function, essentially. You know, you knew what an attribute was. You knew, you know, you, you kind of, you know what class, class is, essentially class is an object oriented. You know what an object is. You know, it, it's, it's a state of, of, of a class, essentially. Um, that really did help me. It really did help my foundation because I never for forgot about it. It was still ingrained in me. And it was just a matter of, you know, picking up something like Python and and, and learning. But it always found pro learning a new programming language much easier and because I knew the concept. I knew exactly what those building blocks were. So in terms of automation, that side I was always good. Now, when I left university, when I, when I gained my degree, I was working as a... Um, uh, uh, it was a first line technical support at Fujitsu, mm -hmm. uh, very good company. Within, I think, a few months, I went into a second line role, um, a system, essentially a system admin role. Um, that was quite interesting. Um, um, the, the role was very interesting. The people were great. Um, they could see the passion that I had, the enthusiasm. Um, and then I remember after leaving that, I went to do a, some contracting um, job. And this was with Juniper, Juniper Networks. I was mm -hmm. working as a system admin. Um, so, uh, but the problem was, I think, and this is probably one of the mistakes that I made, is that uh, in IT at the time, I... I, I never knew about certifications you know for me it was mm -hmm. like you get your degree you know and, and that that's it you, you you go into the field and I never knew about how certification really can broaden your your skill set and also help you specialize in a particular skilled in IT because right. what, what you what, what you learn in university is quite broad you know we learn right. A, a, everything right and you can and nobody learns everything right is it is impossible nobody knows mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. so I, I never knew about certification so after that time period, I was working for a contractor with Juniper as a system admin, and I had a issue in life where I had a, some diff personal difficulties, family-related difficulties, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it sort of, uh, I, I left IT in a way. I just didn't want to go back to IT. I was, you know, not really in a good place to be, um, and then I, it was about after a few years later where I decided that, look, I, I want to go back into IT, um, you know, yep. but, but, but I had this sense in the back of my head where it was telling me, look, it's too late, you know. <laughs> you can't go back into IT, right? You're in your mid thirties. You can't go back into IT, right? Um, yeah. You know, you had, and, I, and it was just something, you know. But uh, growing up, I knew I had a lot, you know, and you had a lot to offer. Yeah. And um, and I remember thinking, okay, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna go back. And I remember just browsing the into YouTube, and I, and I remember I saw this guy. No, uh, no longer uh, IRC. It was YouTube. <laughs> no, <now. laughs> yeah, we're YouTube now. So this is yeah. way back. Yeah, this is like oh, you know YouTube nice. day. So we're, we're yeah we're, we're past it. <laughs> so and I remember seeing um Duan. Um, yes, like, Duan Lightfoot. Like, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, I was on the other day, lab. just two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember seeing Lightfoot, and, and this was a lab every day. And, and yep. I tell him this all the time. You know, I, I I message him on Twitter now and again, and, and tell him how fun they. And, and I remember he was interviewing a particular individual, um, but one of uh, amazing guys, really. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think the guy said, you know, he first got into IT when he was about forty years old, mm -hmm. and um, he's a CCIE, amazing, amazing, amazing guy. I mean, very, very highly intelligent person and I just couldn't believe that you know it made me think wait a second you know Tahif you know you, you can do this you're right I mean like you've you've had that ingrained from you from you know you've got all the qualifications behind you and this was not something that you're picking up now or later but you 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 can do this right you can do this I mean it, it, it's just a matter of willpower and I think shout out to the du one you know I mean it, it was really honestly he, he really did you know watching that podcast a few really did motivate me and it was quite mm -hmm. inspirational actually to get back into the field and funny enough you know I never knew about network engineering I know it sounds quite funny because everyone says to me Taha even my current role you know everything right like I mean what do you, don't you know how did you get into <laughs> it so quickly um and and um it was um I, uh, once I learned about what network engineering was because at the time when I was believe it or not this was about uh, this was just during the pandemic, actually, at the beginning. Oh, really? Of that. Oh, I know, wow. I know, I know. So during the uni, cool. you actually were not, um, I mean, I, I love the part about, you know, like system design and, and yeah. there's also a great book called Thinking in Systems, right? Yeah. So you actually have that, um, you know, uh, background and foundation to build on. But during the uni years, they never taught network engineering or, you know, any networking related things until like later on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they, they did teach us some concepts you know from mm -hmm. things like 
Ethernet, um, sure. you know, IP address in layer three IP. Just, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't very, it wasn't structured. You know, it was, it was done in a way that was quite sporadic. So you couldn't piece all the things together. You know, they were right. very, very sporadic. I mean, and plus it wasn't very, it was very, I would say, quite broad as well. Subject, you know, it wouldn't really go into sort of layer two technologies or layer three technology, and and so it was very broad. Um, but. What one thing they did teach you what is that networking is what connects computers together, right? <laughs> that, hey, that was the key. You can't you can't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> Fundamentally, it's absolutely yeah. true. You know, it's like yeah, you know, they they connect computers together, and you're like, uh huh. But you know, it was very broad. I know it was very very broad. Um, and and I think um, going back today, if if I had honestly, and I say this many many times, if I had the opportunity to go back and not get that not go to university and study for something like a cci i would have done it with within a blink of eye and i'll tell you that now you know because it's it's the, it's the level of knowledge that you gain from these certifications especially the cisco certifications I mean, you know it, i i couldn't i i know it a lot of people will argue with me and tend to tell me, look, one certification has its weight. Yes, it does have it has its weight in society. Getting a degree generally in society and, and, and overall, I think, does have its benefits, um, especially across the job markets where sometimes they require you to have a, a degree. But I think the the level of sort of knowledge that you gain, the level, you know, of a becoming a CCI is it. it it, it far in, you know it encapsulates what you learn in in, in, a, mm -hmm. in a degree and i think at the end of the day you know you the key thing is is that you are able to sort of um sort of you know provide demonstrable skills to an employer that's the most important aspect and i think having a degree alone doesn't quite do that you know it's because it's very broad um so yeah if i could go back you know and replace it i would, I would do that any day you know for a cci any day so um <laughs> because it's just just the level of knowledge i think i think it's, it's, it's very broad it's not really knowledge that you could probably use in, in especially in a role that i'm in where you know, with a CCIA role, especially the network engineering, it's 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 you know, it's amazing. It always has is amazing. So so yeah. Yeah, I think so that was. I think what you said was true about uh, certification is very tactical, right? Like it gives you the tools that once you learn today, you could apply it tomorrow in the job Absolutely. and get things done and Absolutely. check off that box. You know, like impress everybody around you. Go, oh wow, you know, you configure VXLAN. There's your MPLS, yeah. okay. and now that yeah. we have extended layer two over at data centers. But also what you said about um, just the fundamentals that the degree at the uni gave you was also important, right? Now that you know, uh, you, you could uh, at least know which part is, is Cisco specific, which part yeah. is Juniper, and which part is just this underlying fabric that runs through both of them. So I Absolutely. think both are important, but I, I like the part, the part where you pointed out that you know, the certification give you like a good roadmap and the guideline. And so you don't go, you know, these are the guardrails, right? You don't go off rail and, you know, you stay within that path and they give you that foundation and also that checkbox for it, like HR and, you know, very Absolutely. tactical thing that you could do the next day. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. At, at 100%. I think, I think to be, to be fair and to be honest, I think having a degree um, will always have its benefits. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that's, the, I think that's a society and also um, the, the, the weight that it holds. I think it's, is, is, I'm not entirely sure if it's just a name or what it may be. I, I thought by 2023 that, you know, having a college degree wouldn't be a thing anymore right it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's you know but but it is you know i mean if you go to any country whether you know in, in england i don't think it's so much more important but i think if you go to somewhere like the middle east the far east or even america oh, asian right like asian, asian is huge yeah. It's huge, right? It's 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 massive, and I think yeah. that that is, I think the, the 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 thing about it, and I think it's it's an HR box as well. It's like a a check box for HR as well that you know, and and I've seen people you know who are highly talented, hugely talented, could not get promoted to a certain position because they didn't have. A degree you know i mean these are very highly experienced and you know very intelligent you know individuals and yet they couldn't go into a certain position because of their you know they didn't have a degree so they had to go back at a later age to get that degree in order mm -hmm. to, to sort of move forward so it's quite strange so they had to sort of make a, a step backward in order to make two steps forward which was quite interesting because i i i don't i never really i mean yes it provides you with a foundation earlier on um, right but it really doesn't specialize in any particular field it it's 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 like a it's like a it's like a highway right it, it sort of shows you all the different roads and it's up to you to choose which road you want to take really so i think yeah i think that was the, the what it gave me but i think from 
programming point of view, I think it really did help because um, luckily, you know, I had a very, very good lecturer who was really, really a, a very, very nice lady. And I, you know, till this day sort of tried to reach out to her and um, after many, many years, um, but, you know, who she was very, very good with system design lifecycle, um, yeah. you know, unified system development process, amazing lady. And she really ingrained that in me, you know, the, the understanding, the whole object orientated um, subject. So, so when it came to things like the, when we did um, object orientated um, database development in Oracle and, and all these d different sort of learning programming languages, it made things a lot more easier for me because I had that that sort of foundation, um, especially with uh, understanding system design lifecycle and the principle of object oriented. So yeah, it's it, it definitely did did do that for me without a shadow. So, doubt. so let me let me let me ask you this, Taha, right? Because I think you have you've experienced both um, backgrounds and and by the way, I actually last year I went back to you know finish my master's, right? <laughs> so, oh, uh, yeah. so I am in my forties. I got my master's and yeah, I went back for a different reason, but you know, <laughs> it's not about me. Um so you've 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 done all of them, right? You have your uni degree, you actually went away for a little bit, you came back and you expressed you know your your thoughts about certifications. So how would you approach it? What kind of advice would you give, say somebody who's listening to this podcast on uh, where to go? Like, you know, like I'm just, you know, 18 years old and um, I don't know, Taha, give me some advice. Yeah. And I'm, I'm interested in networking. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I let, think- Let me put um, that in. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I think it's quite interesting because okay. I think this this was a, there was a recent discussion on Reddit which I am I sometimes like to sort of give my input and my opinion on. Sure. And I think sure. someone sort of said to me um, or asked a question whether you know how much salary raise can I expect from a CCMP, right? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, which is quite an interesting question, oh my right? God, that would be like a <laughs> subject. I mean, there's yeah. no lack of opinionated <laughs> people on Reddit for sure, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, so it's and it's quite an interesting question because. I don't, you know, uh, at the big, at the, when I first started learning about certification, I thought, yeah, these these are great. It's the end of a be all. Um, but then uh, I've changed my mind. It's it's not about the certification um, sure. that will essentially um, give you that bump in salary. It's about sure. the knowledge that you gain from earning that certification that will give you the the the, the 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 salary bump because I can assure you now that you know I I didn't have a CCMP, but I was able to demonstrate all of those things in my network mm -hmm. architecture interview right i was right. able to demonstrate things that probably could even be done at cc essentially ccie level i was mm -hmm. able to demonstrate you know like 10 ways we can or i think it was six ways we can automate a cisco's aci things that you know so it's it's really sometimes um it's not about you, you shouldn't assume so while certifications are great especially for ticking the hr box you shouldn't just rely on them it really should be down to um self-learning i think self-learning is the key you know mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. um and some may argue and i think at one point you know you think you know you, yeah but when you're earning certification you're essentially self-learning um but when you're sort of studying for a certification you're 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 essentially um looking for you, you know you, you want to get that pass right you want to get a certification so what you tend to have is you tend to sometimes rush your studies and in ways that where you have a steep decline especially after when you pass that certification everything is completely forgotten um right. so what i would advise anybody who's getting into it anybody you know whether they want to get into software development engineering or or, or you know network engineering or any other field in it really it is is that take the time out you know to 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 to, to research the topic that you want to go into whether yeah. that's the cloud engineering or so forth um and learn really i think is the and then this is a quite a difficult topic is is the ability to self-learn right the ability mm -hmm. to self mm -hmm. to teach yourself a topic to sit down and read about the theory and then most importantly and this is the crucial part be able to implement whatever you want to learn like physically try to put yourself in that position where you are implementing how you would have implemented in a sort of real life work environment scenario right um and um 
once you do, once you do that and and, you, and you're able to self learn a, a particular topic you will realize that no matter where you go into you're going to succeed right i mean because you you've you've gone i mean learning is a life cycle right it, it has a it has its sort of unique life cycle and that life cycle doesn't end with just theoretical learning right and and i think that's a shame because that's what a lot of people tend to do with certification it seems to be that they will maybe do you know 90% theory and then like maybe 10% of actual physical implementation or the lab and yet they will they may pass the, they will probably pass the certification but it's a shame because they never actually got to experience the actual you know the, the implementation aspects the physical implementation of the the theoretical um, um, subject that you're learning so I think whatever that you're going to do um, you know because I, I, as an 18 year old I wouldn't exactly know which part you want to go to is that I would say you know learn to lab honestly learn to lab you know whether that's your development environment set up a your own dev environment whether that's network engineering setting up you know even g you know set up your lab environment whether you want to go into network automation you know um you know try to set up your own lab learning lab and 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 what that will essentially teach you is the ability to self-learn as well and, and and i think that would really set you up for success because to be perfectly honest um eric one thing i've noticed in, in this industry especially it's not so hard to stand out it's quite it's very easy to stand out actually if you can put yourself if you if you can i mean Passion can come over time. I'm not saying you have to be very passionate about what you do. That, I mean, that can grow over time, right? Um, but but if you can put yourself in a position where that you are constantly learning um, and, and you're constantly sort of upskilling yourself um, and, you know, and you can display that all the time to, diff, you know, to, to the crowd, it's, it's very easy to stand out because, I, you know, one thing that I've noticed is that um, whenever I go into a position, there's a, we always have a short of a skills gap. You know, maybe this guy is good at automation. Maybe this guy is good at, you know, ACI. There's always a gap, you know, there's always a gap within, within that. So it's not, it's, it's very easy to stand out actually in the crowd and i think um specializing but i think the key aspect is really really is the you know as as you know duan will put it you know just to lab every day really to learn <laughs> to continue learning because i think yeah, that's what you're doing as commission somehow because we're just on promoting him <laughs> no, no. So, so I do. <laughs> you know I, we're, we're... <laughs> I, I like i like how you so elegantly dodged my question but with that with an answer that is so excellent that i, I would gladly accept it right like ask you okay certification or uni degree and you, you're like, no, you just learn to learn. <laughs> like, exactly. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. No, I actually, actually, I love that answer. I mean, you, you're right. I, I agree 100%. Um, yeah. But um, I, I think this is probably a good time to wrap up our first, you know, like the part one uh, of our interview. And then next week, we're going to actually go down. Uh, I mean, I enjoy learning about your background and, uh, you know, your learning, your theories about learning. But in the next episode, we're going to... Uh, talk about uh, containers. We're going to talk about all these other exciting stuff that uh, I saw you posting uh, a couple of weeks ago. So cool. stay tuned. Brilliant. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for listening to Network Automation Nerds podcast today. Find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other major podcast platforms. Until next time. Bye-bye.